If you are going through a divorce or a separation and real estate is part of that separation or part of that divorce, today's video is specifically for you. Listen, we would all love it if divorce was not a thing and that families would stay intact for not only the marriage, but for their children. But unfortunately with today's numbers, what is it like half of all marriages end in divorce? So it is a real thing. And I can tell you after 21 years of real estate, I have helped so many families and so many couples navigate their way through this tunnel. It's not like you're going to move on, but you are going to try to move forward. And that is what today's video is all about buying and selling real estate while going through a divorce. Hi, my name is Lorraine Hetherington. I'm a real estate agent here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. I lead a team of luxury agents and we help people buy and sell homes all day long in the Nashville area. So if you know someone who's hopefully not getting a divorce, but if they are, that's fine too. But if you know someone thinking about moving to the Nashville area and needs a great team to have their back, we'd be so honored to have the opportunity to serve you. And if you're just kicking around the idea of moving, you can also call us too and we're happy to help you in any way that we can. We're all about helping you buy a house, get a fresh start and live your best life yet. So today we're going to talk about the seven things you need to know if you're getting a divorce and have to buy and sell real estate as part of the transition. As a complete disclaimer, I am not a real estate divorce attorney. I am not a counselor. I am here just as a real estate agent who's had a lot of experience in this category and I'm here to help you navigate your way. So the number one thing to remember when you're going through a divorce is selling your current home is not always the first place to start. So I think you and your spouse have to sit down and say, okay, do we want to try to keep this house in our family? And when selling is not an option is maybe sometimes because kids are involved and with all the turmoil and all the upheaval going through their little lives while you're getting a divorce, sometimes it's great to hang on to the house. So at least that part of their life is not changing. Their rooms are the same. They can go home and walk the dog in that same neighborhood and that same sidewalk. So I think you really have to say, do I absolutely have to sell this house? Because sometimes for the kids, you have to love your kids more than you hate your spouse. And sometimes that means keeping the house in the family. So it's a rock and a piece of stability and a piece of peace for your kids. So number one, you do not always have to sell your house. Let's unpack that mandate. So if one spouse is going to quote, keep the house, you have to figure out a way to get the other spouse off of the financial obligations of that house because if they're not living there and it's not their asset, they should not be paying for it. Here's what I highly recommend is the number one thing you have to do is figure out the current market value for that asset. And it is an asset. A home is a way to create immense wealth for your family. It's also a place to provide shelter for your family, but it is an asset. So let's start with the numbers. Highly recommend as a real estate agent that you and your spouse both hire an appraiser to come in and come up with a fair market value for that house. So you're not going to go to Zillow with their estimates. You're not going to go to the county website and say what the county thinks those numbers are because those can often be really, really off. So you each pay for a third party appraiser to come in and statistically figure out what this house is worth. So let's just say you bought the house for 500,000 five years ago and now it's worth around 800,000. So you get two appraisers. One values the house at 800,000. The other appraiser says it's worth 15. Those two appraisers should be within 5% of the value. So they should be that close on numbers. If they're not, get a third one. So let's just say first appraiser says 800. The other one says it's 815. So your value is right in the middle. You take the average. So this house that you are living in is 807,500, 8075. That's your number that you're going to base the split of dividing this asset. Okay, so now you have the number. You've established the financial asset and how much it's worth. Then you've got to work on getting you or your spouse off of the financial obligations of paying, writing the check for that house. A couple of ways to do it. Today, the most preferred way and the smartest financial decision is to have whoever gets the house go back to your current lender and see if they can solely by themselves assume the loan. That's a key component because chances are when you bought the house, probably had about three to 4% interest rates and they're hovering around seven now. So if your spouse who's staying in the house can go to your current lender and assume the mortgage all by themselves and get you off of the paperwork, that's the ideal situation for everyone. It's also quicker. If that won't work, then your spouse then has to go to a bank and get financing for that house so they can carry it on their own and get you off of it. The number two tip or piece of advice if you're getting a divorce and buying and selling a house is if you're not going to keep the house and you as a couple have agreed that the house has to be sold 
sold, you both need to focus on selling the house. At this stage in the game, it's everybody always wants to go and start looking for their next house, but you both have to hunker down and sell your current asset. So I would highly recommend you get at least two agents in your area, people that are, are experts, like we're an expert here in Nashville, get the experts into your home and you want them two things. A, what if anything do we need to do to this house to get it ready for sale? And those two agents are probably gonna come up with a pretty close list, like, okay, your appliances are shot, you need to get those and this entire house needs to be painted. So figure out what it takes that you're gonna need to do to get the house ready and then work on those projects together and then come up with a hard timeline to get the house up on the market. So again, you gotta sell the house, you need to figure out what do I need to do to get it ready and what is my timeline? Number three, both spouses in the divorce have to commit to a timeline and commit to the process. This is where I see things always go a little wonky on divorces is both spouses say they're all in and they're committed to selling the house, but. There's always one usually that is not all in because they don't want to really sell the house, but the divorce attorneys have decided that that is the asset that's gotta go. So by committing to the process, this is what I mean. You together with perhaps your divorce attorneys have to sit down and come up with showing times. When are buyers allowed in the home to see it? And who's preparing the house to get it ready for sale? Unfortunately, usually one person remains in the house, so it's their job to get the house ready. This is a true story. I had a couple going through divorce, loved both of them dearly, but for whatever reason, one spouse who was in the house didn't really want to sell. So she kept turning down all of the showings. She would make an excuse, not a good day. My dog is sick. My kids are sick. I'm stressed. So buyers weren't able to get into the house because she was essentially trying to crash all of the buyer showings. So then they had to go back to the divorce attorneys and say, okay, you've got to let people in and it's gotta be ready. So then what she did is, okay, I'm gonna allow showings in, but she, who was just the essence of class, got this janky baseball cap, this really weird t-shirt, and she would sit out on a lawn chair for showings, drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. Keep in mind, she was extremely healthy. She didn't drink beer and she sure didn't smoke cigarettes, but for showing, she would again try to crash everything. So in this extremely high-end neighborhood, these lovely buyers would walk up and they'd see this and they'd be like, we are so out of here. So if that happens again, you're gonna have to go back to your divorce attorneys and it may be that both spouses have to get out of the house and move to separate apartments to sell the house. Because again, commit to the process and everybody's gotta really be on it and be honest. So back to that story, how it ended, wasn't good for either spouse. So what happened is the house was on the market for months and they both ended up making probably a good $70,000 less than they would have. So 70,000 divided by two, 35,000 each. They lost because they said they were committing to the process, but they really weren't. So be in and be all in if this is what you've got to do. Number four piece of advice, your current living situation is about to drastically change and you've got to rip the bandaid off and make the absolute best of the situation. True story, I had another couple that I was helping and they loved their kids more than they hated each other during this divorce. And they decided it was best for the kids to keep the house and then they rented a very modest apartment. So literally Monday through Wednesday, the wife stayed there with the kids and then on Wednesday night, the husband would come back and the wife would go to the apartment, stay there while the husband got to stay in the house with the kids. And they just did this swap until the house sold. And it was genius because they got to be in the environment with their kids. So it was a little less hard on the kids and that worked out beautifully. It may be just that one spouse or the other has to just go live in another place. That is an added expense. So again, this is why you wanna have everything dialed in and work together to commit to sell this house because you're essentially paying for an apartment and paying for a house. So that's just money to burn in a time when you really shouldn't be burning money. Number five, lead with numbers. Our team is always saying, hey, what does the bank say? Well, now it's the time for both you and your spouse and figure out what you both can afford when that house sells. So you're gonna have a pretty good idea with your agent how much money you're gonna be able to make both of you at the end of the sale of the house. And then you're gonna have to qualify for your own loans to buy your next house in this process. The sixth piece of advice, and this is really important, is you both have to agree on an agent that you feel will represent both of your best interests. So it can't be your bestie or your ex-husband's bestie. It really has to be a neutral third-party agent that is going to be the essence of professional. So what I mean by that is whoever you end up hiring, you need to have the talk that all communication has to be a three-way text, a three-way email. And you know what? 
it's easier on everybody because everybody gets the same information at the same time. There's no conversations outside of those group communications because that agent is hired to represent both of you on the sale of the house. Also, don't complain or rip your spouse to your agent because that's really not their job. Their job is to sell your house and help you make as much money as possible, as quickly as possible, so you can move on. And the seventh, probably most valuable piece of advice that I can give you is leading up to all of this, be sure to take your time and make sure that it is the right decision for you. Marriage is hard. Sometimes you and your spouse are not going to agree. So take your time before you come to this fork in the road. And I always say, you know when you're at the fork in the road and you're gonna know which direction to take when you're at that fork. So take your time and make sure that this is really the right decision for you and your spouse. And then if you decided, yes, this is the way we go, then move forward with as much speed as possible because this is a really hard time for not only you, but for your kids. I hope this has helped you. These are seven tips that I have learned after 21 years of real estate, helping couples navigate how to buy and sell real estate while going through a divorce. My name is Lorraine. I'm a Nashville expert and I hope everything's going great with you. And we would love the opportunity to talk with you about real estate in general. And uh, again, we service the Nashville, Tennessee area. We love the opportunity to chat. So go ahead and text us or email us if you are in the neighborhood and want to tour some great homes in Nashville. We'd be honored to earn your business. Thanks. And we'll see you next week.